A welcome to Canalbeth Road. It's a fairly bleak and grey, typical November afternoon here as we get the arrival of the two teams, led out by the Cambridgeshire referee, Mike Bailey. A meeting, really, of two clubs without a great deal of cash to spend. I suppose a lot of people will say they're living in the real world. But they are clubs who still produce a good passing game, but at the moment with widely differing results. Charlton beaten only twice in the league, just one off the top. Luton four wins all season and 12 times out of 19 starts, Luton have finished as losers, and they're just one off the bottom of the Ensley First Division. Let's check on the teams then to start with. Luton with the American Jurgen Sommer in goal, at number 19, Des Linton, five is Trevor Peak, six John Dreyer, three Marvin Johnson, seven Paul Telfer, 12 is Kerry Hughes, 27 Alan Harper, formerly with Everton, eight is Scott Oakes, 22 Kerry Dixon, Chelsea fans in particular need no reminding of his pedigree, he joined the club here from Southampton, and 28 is a 25-year-old recent signing from Canada, Jeff Onjo. Well, Peak and Drea form an experienced partnership in defence. Hughes is a really gifted young midfield player. Dixon and Onja will be up front. Jeff Onja, in fact, the 25-year-old Canadian. Good scoring record in Luton's reserve. Something like seven goals in seven games. And indeed, he scored in his first team debut, which was at Crystal Palace in midweek. Right, let's check the Charlton side. They've got Mike Salmon in goal. They've also got these confusing uh, squad numbers, let me tell you. So the right back is Stuart Barmer, who wears number one. Ten is Alan McCleary. Twenty-three, Phil Chappell. Eleven, Scott Minto. Fourteen, Sean Newton. Sixteen, Darren Pitcher. Twenty-one, Colin Walsh. Eighteen, John Robinson. Eight is Carl Lieben. And twelve is Gary Nelson. Well, the loss in midfield of Alan Pardew and Peter Garland, they're both injured, means that Colin Walsh moves from left to centre midfield. John Robinson, who's been battling against flu today, moves from right to left, and Sean Newton comes in down the right side of midfield, and Lee Burn and Nelson are their two main strikers. Let's check on the uh, substitutes for today. For Luton Town, Martin Williams, uh, Paul Dickoff, who's on loan from Arsenal, and the reserve keeper, Andy Pedersen. And for Charlton, the reserve keepers, John Vaughan, Kim Grant, and Dennis Bailey, who's on loan from Queen's Park Rangers. They are the visitors' subs. As I told you, the ref, Mike Bailey from Cambridgeshire. Theo Fowler is alongside me. Prospects, Theo? Well, I'm really looking forward to it. I think there's a lot of experience in the Luton team. And David, again, David Pleat has done marvellous with his blend of youth and, and experience. Charlton coming off the back of him beaten against Derby County. I've seen quite a bit of Charlton. They're a very talented side. And I, I think it's going to be a real real test for both of them. Charlton wanting to get back on the winning ways. And Luton, I'm sure, not wanting to lose here. I'm really looking forward to it, Brian. As I said, both sides do like to pass it around a bit. They certainly do. They like to play. David has always been involved. David Pleat with teams that like to play. So again, I think Charlton will be just the same. I think it's going to be very hard early on. Tight. Mike Bailey just checking with both his linesmen. And it's Luton Town in the white shirts against Ch start of the game. I hope we've cleared them up now. We've changed the microphones around as Phil Chappell makes the mighty clearance for Charlton Athletic. No early frights for either side, just an early fright for us. Apologies if it uh, spoilt your enjoyment just for a moment or two. Des Linton, Luton fullback. Full form of Carl Lieburn getting in with the header, but a free kick awarded to Luton Town. Johnson plays it forward. Kerry Hughes up to Onja. This is Alan McCleary with the clearance. New York, six foot four, Jurgen Sommer. Towards Kerry Dixon. Dixon beaten in the air by Chapel. 
Hughes just playing it on towards the uh, Canadian. He's in fact scored an excellent goal against Crystal Palace at Selhurst Park in the 2-3 uh, defeat that Luton suffered that night. Um, Welsh International. Onja. Linton. Onja again. Dixon waiting in the middle. Hughes has come up quickly. Here's Hughes. He's got Oakes away on the left. Newton getting in for Charlton. Barmer planting it. Nelson. Hughes. Flicking it through towards Onja. It's a little bit frantic at the moment for Luton. They're, they're trying to play through just a little bit too early, but it is nice to see both teams playing football and trying to do it. It's a great incentive for Luton, one off the bottom of the table. They move up at least three places if they uh, win here today. Charlton, as we've said, go back to the top if they win here. It's Oaks for Luton. for the header for Luton one by McCleary for Charlton Telfer Johnson it's kept in by Scott Oakes Hughes it's a good ball for Kerry Dixon one just made a good run for him in the middle Salmon had it knocked out of his hands almost there and uh, well it's interesting Luton are claiming that was a back pass by Minto uh, to uh, Mike Salmon, the goalkeeper. But the referee and linesman quite right in saying, well, no, of course, it was meant to be a clearance. It's just that the ref, the uh, goalkeeper picked it up. It was a bit fortunate there, Mike Salmon. It really was. Kerry Dixon making good runs. Honja. Very interesting contrast there, Brian, with Carl Leibon and Kerry Dixon. Movement off the ball and one static one. Back it goes. Tell me a bit more about that, Dixon and Leibon. I always feel you have an out when you've got a Carl Leibon, and that's what happened with Nelson's shot. But Dixon's running is superb off the ball. Good play here by Kerry Hughes. But a really good start to this game. It certainly is. I mean, it, it isn't surprising, Brian, because both teams do want to play. Chapel with the clearance. Apart from that one. Big defender. That's Kerry Dixon. Terrific record at Chelsea. 335 league games, 147 goals. Didn't quite happen for him to that extent at Southampton. But he's a Luton boy, and I've no doubt glad to be back here. A really good move for him, this one. Ooh, a slip there by McCleary. Oakes gets onto it. Can Dixon finish it off? Straight into the arms of Mike Salmon. That's the sort of stuff he likes. Near post where he can deal with it and finish. The slip there caused problems for Charlton. Oakes delivers a good ball in here. Dixon straight at the keeper. Chapel again. Minto. Not wide for Robinson. Looking to get past Linton. Alan Harper bringing it away now for Luton. Up to Onja. Dixon. by Kerry Dixon Johnson right again 
Cross comes in from Scott Oakes. Free kick to Luton. Dixon winning it, knocking it on for Onja. Oaks, there's Lieburn. Newton, pushing it about nicely. Pitcher to Barmer and now to Walsh. Treya, judged that header well. Comes to Kerry Hughes. Pitcher now for Charlton. Challenged by Oakes and beaten by him. Here's again. Onjo waiting. Dixon on the far side. Telfer can pick it up for them. Still nil-nil here. Alan Harper. Onjo, the back heel. He's got some very nice touches the way Onjo, isn't he? He's not aware too much of the pressure, but his touch is very good and awareness is good. At the moment, it's a very much uh, what I would call a real possession game, Brian. Minto beating on during the air. Telfer playing it short to Harper, trying to get it forward again to Dixon. Walsh. Free kick to Charlton. That's a very simple way of break, breaking down defences who want to push up, get a midfield player to run. A little bit unlucky, but he was off. Yes. Yeah, absolutely certain. Yes. Lee Burns header again, Walsh. Your, your man, number one, Stuart Barmer. Number one playing right back doesn't make sense he had his hand raised don't get me talking about <laughs> these crazy <laughs> squad numbers again Sorry I've yet to that. find anybody in any club and that goes for premier clubs as well that, that really say yeah we uh, quite enjoy having them it's like American football playing <laughs> confuses everybody 56 and 82 but it's not a bigotry in the uh, First division, I can't think why clubs are wearing the bits. There we are. Cleary. And Barmer gets it back. Salmon gets it clear. Pitcher. Just teased. Just teased Kerry. Phil Chappell. keeping this going well now as Marvin Johnson takes it up for them and Newton gets back there it's still not out of play Johnson again looking to turn it back does so and a header that goes in and it's a, an excellent goal there for Luton Town and Paul Telfer makes it 1-0 What a, what a lovely cross that was. All credit to the boy Johnson. I thought he was checked by Newton as well. They handled it very well. Right foot cross, smashing header. That's what the game needs. One goal. Charlton have now got to open up just a little bit more. That's a very good goal. And his third of the season. 
What sort of response are we going to get from uh, Charlton? Well, Walsh was nearly through. I did actually say that I felt if somebody went by on, the, on that side and got a good cross in, we would have a goal. Lovely. Sommer was down quickly. Robinson, Walsh, hit long towards Levern, Beek. to Charlton. Chapel with a clearance. Armour with his clearance. Up to Nelson. Robinson. Back for Minto. And a goal kick. It's going to be Here's that goal again. Cross coming in from Marvin Johnson. And Telfer's header. Very well taken. Mento. Peak with the clearance for Luton. Telfer. Up to Onja. Linton, Onja, Linton again, there's Oaks, Onja, oh, turned it back now for Hughes, and he turned it himself but there were three, four Charlton defenders around him, but Luton's certainly putting some good passing movements together now, Minton, given away. Walsh, Minto gets another chance. Lever. Chapel. Robinson. And away come Luton again. Hughes to Oaks. Johnson obliging with the run down the left. Delphers in that self same position again. Dixon's in there too. And Barmer prevents the ball going away for a corner, but it's still with uh, Johnson. And in the end, Newton hacks it clear for Charlton Athletic, but not very far. Oaks plays it in. Touched on again. And that's a corner. Came off McCleary. Good spell this for Luton. They're very, very neat and tidy down this left hand side with the boy Johnson. He's doing very, very well combination with Oaks is excellent causing Ch uh, Charlton lots of problems so Oaks will take the corner for Luton Prayers in there but so too is Lee Burn back Walsh making the break for Charlton Minto's gone storming through the middle for him but he couldn't quite pick him up because Peak was in the way. Here's Walsh again. Cleary. Left hand side with Harper and Telfer now as the centre midfielders. Telfer having moved in from the right. Pitcher. Well, 
I have to say that when you watch Trevor Peak, you realise experience is something you cannot buy. He's cool, he's calm, and everything he's wanted to do, and he hasn't flapped once. And already he hasn't got great pace, but he's got a very good brain. Up goes Chapel. It's Robinson. And there's Trevor Peak again. Oaks in a moment. Let's see Darren Pitcher though bringing the ball now here for Stuart Barmer. Oh, he almost hit that straight at Newton. Newton, I think, maybe still suffering a little bit from his clash with uh, the Luton goalkeeper. Onja. Freya gets it clear up towards Kerry Dixon. Chapel just pulling off Dixon was there for the. Uh, Edda, Minto, Harper, now Williams the substitute, Turfer, Johnson, and Hughes. Hughes, Telfer. It's a bit of a shame that Hughes has had the move because I, I don't think he'd be quite so effective in there as he was in midfield. I felt that his runs in midfield were certainly causing problems. Chapel beaten in here that time. Painter trying to get on to it. Salmon makes the save. Looks neat and tidy, doesn't he? took the chance it's a good blend that David Pleat's got have to open the game up and maybe as the game goes on young Newton will possibly tire a little bit and they'll see him as an opportunity and throw, it for, throw him forward throw then for Luton Town there's Linton once with Leicester City finds Onja to Linton again Onja didn't get a touch on that one McCleary caught out a little bit and for a moment, Kerry Dixon looked as though he was going to pick a spot, but it was Stuart Palmer who got in and made a very necessary intervention for Charlton Athletic. Up goes Telfer. Here's Dixon. Deep one again. Ninja helping it out. Robinson playing it in again into the gap there, but it was played a little too firmly, and Walsh slipped in any case. Field, Brian, and brought Williams over to the left side. I think that's a good ploy. Linton, Harper, Chapel's header for Charlton. Onja, Harper again. Johnson had an excellent first half. Williams, Harper again. Onja. Hughes. Again, it's Williams. Obama got that one away for Charlton. Robinson tries to keep it going. Dreyer for Luton. And back to keeper Mike Salmon. Andre. It's Mike Salmon. Jump that time by Pitcher to Onja brings Hughes into it again. A flick forward. And Salmon gets it into touch. Formation: the Charlton will certainly hit one or two balls early at the boy. Luton's ball. The referee's very really quietly, uh, Mick Bailey. What a good player he was. 
Well, there was a Mike Bailey, played for Charlton for many years and was their manager too. This is not the one. Yeah, I agree with you. I think the only uh, contentious point was that possible advantage that he might have played a minute or two ago. Oh, my goodness! Well, Mike Salmon completely lost that one, and so too did all the Charlton defence, and that ball was allowed to arch its way through that penalty area and just wide of the far post. Kerry Hughes with it. Nobody quite knew where it was until it had gone. I must say that and so Barmer will take this free kick for Charlton. Hit once again towards Lever. Nelson couldn't get hold of it. Telfer brings it clear with a nice little chip up to Andrew. McCleary and Minto. Good play by Minto. Peak. Lever towards Bailey. Couldn't quite get a touch on it. Lever going in for another look at it. Robinson battling away there, but the ball comes through to Onja. Good spell this for Charlton. Yes, I haven't got him now. Palmer. Robinson outside him, looking happier down that right flank. Palmer's cross, too high for Nelson. Warshaw aimed to keep this going though. Just stood on it for a moment, saw that Chapel was in a bit of space. Minto. Onja. Telfer. Here come Luton, but Telfer's up there on his own. He's got four Charlton men around him. He's got a bit of support now from Hughes on one side and Onja on the other. And then in the end, pulled it back for Kerry Dixon. Went completely the wrong way. I really don't know what he was thinking there, the lad Telfer. He went completely the wrong way. Here's Telfer again. Harper. Hughes sold a nice little dummy there on Robinson, but Robinson gets back. And Salmon gets the ball clear. Johnson. Bit of pace about the game now. Both sides have up the uh, pace a good deal. It's a throw for Charlton. Let's go down on the touchline and get a view uh, from Chris Mormont as to the way that Charlton might play for the rest of this game. Yes, the Charlton management team of Alan Kirbishley and Steve Britt have just been telling me that they really want to get some more width and get at the Luton fullback. So that's why John Robinson is working down the right. Find you with the shot. Saved by Salmon. Sorry, Chris, go on. All wide on the left, and uh, Britt and Kirbishley really believe that that's their way back into the game. Thanks for that. Dixon Tedder. Andre chasing. Bringing somebody else into the play again. He's done very well, the boy Andre. He's certainly adapted to what's going on. I'm sure he's learned from Kerry Dixon, who, who really is effective, honestly. Off the ball, his, his movement is terrific. Mistake. Again, Trevor Peak, the man getting back to clear it. Bailey playing Robinson in. And Peak getting the cross away. For the corner to Charlton, now being taken. Walsh hitting it long. Might have been any one of six players trying to put that into the net. It was a much better corner to Brian, wasn't it? Better than the other ones would have hit long. Johnson trying, well, though, Robinson trying to carve it into the net, but Luton got it away. They've now got a free kick. And we now have a little under 20 minutes to go. I think it's who really is going to keep their nerve now. It, it is a test for Luton, and when you... It's hard to believe, I find it hard to believe, that they are so lowly placed in the league, to be honest. Well, Luton are going to make a substitution. They're taking off uh, the young Canadian, Onja. And Paul Dickoff, I imagine, is coming on. 
Well, he's a very similar sort of player, Brian Young, Paul Dickoff, good touch, good worker, possibly feeling the pace now with playing first team games for the for a long, long time. He hasn't played for Arsenal first team until the end of the season.